you uh, there was another case that uh, maybe people living in LA would would remember because it was so it's so noteworthy. Um, the you were the DA for the oleander poisoning case in LA County. That's the David Scans case. That's yeah. that's one amazing case. Four nonfiction books were written on that case. Oh, uh, um, it's a, it was an amazing case. It got tremendous coverage. The preliminary hearing. You know what a preliminary hearing is? Well, in the general, preliminary the, hearing yeah. before you go to trial, they have a hearing that's like a mini trial, and the only burden of proof on the prosecution is to establish that a crime has been committed and that the defendant is responsible for it. And the only standard of proof is not guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, but by a, a, um, a, a, a poverty, um Give me one second. The standard of proof in a preliminary hearing is a uh, strong suspicion that the defendant committed the crime. So, uh, And there's no jury. It's just a, a judge who makes the determination. And so that turned out to be with a different prosecutor. Uh, had to be released from the case, Walt Lewis, a, a really wonderful prosecutor. That pre preliminary hearing was put on in Pasadena. And it, it lasted, it was the longest prelim in history of Pasadena. The preliminary hearing went for eight months. The and preliminary, it, it wow. The preliminary hearing. And there were multiple charges. There were mass cremations. What happened was the Scons family owned a uh, crematorium and a funeral home called Lamb Funeral Home. It was the most ghoulish thing you could ever believe uh, that happened. They were mass cremating bodies. You know, you have to burn one body at a time in what's known as a retort. They were stuffing 20 and 30 bodies into a retort, just mixing the ashes and giving the next of kin back anyone's ashes, mm. all in violation of the state funeral law, yes. of course. Yes. And um, <laughs> they used to have a contest, these bums that oh. worked for them, and they burned the crematorium down one night because they put too many bodies oh in one God. retort. So and what they were doing was so so they the crematorium burned down. Now it meant that there could, there's only a few crematoriums in L.A. County, and that mm -hmm. was one of them. So they had to build one. So they couldn't get a permit to build one in any county after theirs burned down. Oh. So David Scott, who was one scary human being, uh, David Scott uh, got a, a license to do. Um, Plastics manufacturing, allegedly for NASA, the alleged heat shield for the for the space reentry uh, program, and uh, that was what the public thought was going on there. In truth, in fact, was that they started burning bodies there, except that oh. it was not according to code, and um, they were also removing the body organs. Oh. Eyes, hearts, lungs, kidneys, and selling them to research labs and major universities. They all got sued. It cost them millions of dollars. Good. But they, and they all got sued for not investigating as to where these were coming from. Anyway, and they were removing with pliers gold teeth mm. from the cadavers. Anyway, to make a long story short, one night, a guy was out walking his dog, and he smelled something horrible. And so he called the authorities and said, I believe people are being burned there. And they said, you're crazy. He rolled up his arm and he showed him his uh, Auschwitz tattoo. And he mm. says, I know what burning bodies smell like. So they got a search warrant to go to the place in San Bernardino. And they found out exactly what was going on there. Found the prosthetic devices taken off the people. Oh. Found all the gold teeth in jars. Oh. Uh discover the contract for the body parts. You're talking about the Bellini Eye Institute at USC, a major, major organization. North Carolina and UCLA were receiving body parts and organs. And the Mexican never knew this. You know, they never gave permission. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Scons tried to uh, tried to kill a couple of competitors and then tried to kill a guy who wouldn't send his business to him. But to make a long story short, they were undercutting everyone in the state for cremations. They were doing them at a loss because they were making so much money mm -hmm. unbeknownst mm -hmm. to the public off the gold teeth and the organs. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, Sconce, uh 
tried to had a attempted to murder a guy, so he was charged with that. And then he was the word got out that he, and they had him on tape that he was going to try to murder the prosecutor too, by hanging him on a meat hook uh, oh. in a freezer, it wrapped in plastic so they keep him alive and beat him to death while he was on the hook. Can you believe what I'm telling you? I'm a little sick right now. Yeah. I, I was carrying a gun for the whole process, and my hair stood on end when I was reading it. So Walt had to move his family out of Los Angeles to another location and and had to be recused from the case because that was part of the evidence to be used against skunk to show motive intent and uh, what was going on. Anyway, uh, then came the polyander poisoning. Well, that case was pending, and the judge in Pasadena felt since the oleander poisoning case, which was going to be tried in Ventura County mm -hmm. by me and James Rogan, who became a uh, congressman, a uh, judge and then a congressman after this case, then the Secretary of Patents and Copyrights under the Bush administration, and now as a judge again in Orange County, he and I put on a preliminary hearing and held the defendant to answer in uh, Ventura County who were on loan to them as special prosecutors. That's because the conspiracy began in L.A. County, even though the murder probably occurred by oleander poisoning up in Ventura County. Anyway, this other murder that he was uh, tried to commit and was charged with conspiracy to commit murder was disposed of by the judge in Pasadena because he thought the, it was a dead bang case in Ventura and wanted a long case out of his court. Mm. I know it's getting complicated. I could break it down for you another time after we finish this conversation. But anyway, we went up to Ventura County. Oh, he took a plea and gave the guy on a conspiracy to commit murder no time and a probation. But the probation on, on the case was the most it could possibly be an exception to the five-year lit on probation in California. It was 25 it was a lifetime probation, okay? Mm -hmm. So if he could violated probation, he could go to prison for 25 to life. Mm. Anyway, the judge got rid of that case. We went up to Ventura County, held him to answer. We're getting ready for trial. The defense made a motion. He had a really fine defense lawyer. Uh, the defense made a motion to exhume the body mm -hmm. so so that they could show that there was no uh, land or poisoning in the body. But it's a water molecule-based oh. uh and it dissipates. Well, well, anyway, they assumed yeah. the body. They put by the victim, and they could. They did testing with what was known as liquid chromatograph tandem mass spectrometry. Big <laughs> word. And they were unable to find. They were unable to find any poison. And we felt we needed to actually prove the cause of death. And without that, um, we we decided to dismiss the case, mm. even though we had an alleged confession. Oh. There had to be a corpus, and the corpus select I meant we had to prove what the cause of death was. And without uh, an expert, we had an expert that says he did find it in the right. system, but that guy was later turned out to be a uh, charlatan. Why? What he was, was his motive? With the in, Simpson uh, case. Uh, oh, what would his motive have been to have you know fabricated the the uh, the findings oh, of the body? Oh, publicity. We don't oh. know if he fabricated it, but his reputation was really sullied. Okay. After after that, and we started picking up transcripts from other jurisdictions in the United States to show what the situation was. So we decided not to rely upon him. Mm. Anyway, uh, having said all that, uh, we came back to LA and we set, got had set aside something really rare and hard to do. The what the judge did in Pasadena got rid of the case and put him on probation for mm -hmm. conspiracy to commit murder. Mm -hmm. And we were ready to go to trial. I was ready to go to trial in Pasadena on that case. And they got an emergency stay in the federal court in Los Angeles. The federal district court set aside the uh, ruling by a previous judge who set aside the plea. Uh, in other words, he had pleaded to conspiracy to commit murder mm -hmm. on the basis that he'd get straight probation which oh, he did. We had that set aside, but the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is a federal court, overruled the state court. That case, by the way, before it was overruled by the federal court, mm -hmm. was affirmed by the Court of Appeal, the California Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court. 
until it came would bounce back on other issues. Huh. Anyway, Sconce, um, so there was nothing left to try. So Sconce uh, was on probation, and this this worked out brilliantly for us, but it took many years. Violated the terms and conditions of probation, was caught with illegal firearms and selling them mm-hmm. across the country, which mm-hmm. made him very dangerous. And he got 25 to life for a probation violation. Good. We'll never hear or see of that again. It was such a rare instance because nobody has ever put on probation for life because any crime that's serious enough to be part of a conspiracy to commit murder is going to get time. You know what I mean? Well, and yeah. parole as opposed to probation. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Scott is in prison for life without parole. Anyway, his parents were also convicted for um, the funeral home violations, and they mm. each got eight years. Uh, it, was the eight most years. Incre- it was the most incredible case. I, I should try to find the books where I have the books put away that were written on it. I don't know. They probably got a print. They were paperbacks. You but, um, you can find them for your benefit, but that is that is too grisly reading for me. I'm a lightweight. <laughs> I, I can't no, take it. <laughs> I, well, I tell you, I was scared trying the case mm. because this guy was capable of doing everything and anything. And in fact, as a shaggy dog story, when we prosecuted Hawkins, mm-hmm. Hawkins was believed to have murdered eight or ten drug dealers who were his competition, mm-hmm. and we had many people come forward and tell us that. And where was he having them disappear to? They disappeared. Uh, they were oh. never found. Scott was burning his bodies. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and I had a, that was my first marriage. I, this was my second marriage. I, I was married the first time for 37 years, and I had a wife and three kids, and I really feared for their lives mm-hmm. because this guy was capable of anything. And he had a couple of bodyguards, henchmen, that did his dirty work. And one of them got justice uh, in a manner that proves there is a God. Uh, he was a scuffy diver, Danny Galambo, and dived out of an airplane with his chute, and it didn't open. Mm. <laughs> and he was killed. Mm. And no, no loss for humanity. No, it doesn't sound like it. Anyway. I, I have a question, though, something I'm not clear on. Um who who was he um now how did it come about that he he was charged with uh, conspiracy to commit murder how how did that get it you know? on a totally different person okay he he hired uh, Danny Galambo from another guy to uh, kill kill a competitor oh another competitor jeez yeah he wanted the only the guy poison because mm-hmm. uh uh because he wouldn't sell his business to him so he mm. he get it by hook or by crook and he, then the other guy was a competitor, and and uh, he uh, he wanted him wiped out. Hmm. You know, it's it's funny um, in a morbid sort of way. I was when I was preparing for our interview, I, I was reading um, you know all the L.A. Times um, handouts and uh, uh, clippings on the the murders, and I got an instantaneous headache. And now hearing you talk about this, I also have an instantaneous headache, and I never get headaches. I think it's just kind of... Well, the first time I started reading the eight-month preliminary hearing transcript, which was, you know, an outline of a case, my hair stood on end every day. I mean, I got really nervous. Mm. Because um, these movies you see, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Mm. I can't watch movies like that because I know that stuff really happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's not fantasy. It's not exaggeration. That stuff happens. Mm-hmm. I know prosecutors who tried cases like that oh. where the body parts were found in freezers. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean.